that you had contact with um, you know, the Atacama humanoid uh, group and if you had anything you could share with us with that. Well, you know, in the work, we, the, she's asked about contact with the Atacama humanoid origins. Uh, uh, in our work, when we go out into the stars, we do a lot of work with remote viewing consciousness and uh, in, in, intuitive uh, remote viewing. Uh, I don't have one of the CIA's electronic systems, but we don't need it. You can learn to meditate and do that naturally uh, with practice. But uh, we have had experiences where more than one person have seen, now whether it's exactly the species of the Atacama humanoid, very much similar, very tiny, where the adults are only like a foot, 14 inches tall. Now all of you know that the Atacama humanoid has been certified by the world's expert on dysplasias and skeletal abnormalities to be a, about a six to eight year old equivalent, I mean, uh, because of the, the growth plates of the long bones, not just the legs, but all over the body. Uh, and he has recently asserted, reasserted that. And this is Dr. Ralph Lockman at, uh, at Stanford. Um, and so the question is whether that particular being is of extraterrestrial origin or some mix or of a civilization that may have come, been here for thousands of years where you get these stories that you hear around the world of the, I was talking to a man in New York who came to my presentation about uh, the we people, the little ones, uh, that have been reported in, in, in Russia and in the Caucasus and in Ireland and in Puerto Rico. So there is this, you know, you don't know how, where mythology leaves off and fact uh, and evidence. And, and one of the things we would like to do, and we may do this year, is uh, a further, uh, uh, exploration of just the Atacama mystery of what that is because it is still a mystery. In fact, I was just corresponding with the genetics guy at Stanford uh, a couple weeks ago and he says it's more of a mystery now because they have found the area on the genome that controls for stature, height. And he says it is, and I'm quoting, the chances that it is a mutation or a random event is infinitesimally small. Now this is a guy who heads up a lab at Stanford with 45 PhDs under him, who sent it to the top people in the world. So this thing is more of a mystery now than it was a year ago. Also in the film series, just to correct something, he, at the time they thought it was a male. Now they're not even sure of its gender or if it has a gender as we think of it. All right, so, um, so maybe it's androgynous, or who knows or they don't reproduce in that same XY fashion as male, female. Um, the point I'm making is uh, the more we learn about it, the stranger it is, not less, which would point to something extraordinary, but we can't claim that. Um, we don't know. And of course there's no genetic database of extraterrestrial species. Well, maybe the National Security Agency has one. I don't. <laughs> but that means that the Stanford professor doesn't either. And so what he did was run, when we took the clippings off the rib of this little guy, or girl, or whatever, <laughs> we took the bone marrow, and, and he, he got an excellent genetic sample, ran it, just automated, computerized. It wasn't done by hand, that takes years and billions of dollars, but through the 2,500 ethnic groups that are known in, in, on the planet. And 91% matched, 9% didn't. Very large unmatched. It's 32,000 base pairs of genetic material did not match. In other words, completely unknown from a very good sample at the best three reference labs in the world. So that means that, now a, a, a gorilla is 98.7% identical genetically to, to you and me, or well, maybe more to me than most of you. But um, I'm big and I'm furry and I'm muscly, so I'm more of an ape. But the uh, Atacama humanoids 91. Um, I give you some perspective, the Neanderthal, which is a totally different species from Homo sapiens, is 99.5% identical to modern Homo sapiens. So we're dealing with something here that we don't know. Now, unfortunately, the geneticist had this, has to refer to this thing as a deformed human because he's got a career to protect, for one thing, but also he can't, he's never gonna say it's ET. But of course, when he said that, boom, 
the mainstream media said, oh, mystery solved, it's a deformed human child. Well, I've delivered a lot of premature infants in what are called precipitous emergency deliveries. None of them are six inches tall. And that's at birth, this is six years old, and it's six inches tall. I held it, I was one of the first few people who have ever held this, and doing this procedure on it, oh my God, it's so dry and fragile, we were afraid we were gonna shatter the whole thing. But ultimately, it'd be great to go to that area of the world on an expedition, but you know, there aren't funds to do that. Um, it'd be great if somebody just in the scientific curiosity wanted to fund it and come along, uh, as long as they came along and didn't interfere. Because what I would love to do, I mean, it sounds terrible, but you know, with the science part, because what would be wonderful is to be able to go there and actually set up uh, a CE5 contact event in the area during the night and during the day do expeditions to areas to see if we can find more of these because there's reports that there are. Um, now, whether that's true or not, they're a bit apocryphal. Um, but if there are, everyone agrees in the scientific community we're working with, if you get two of these, it's game over, it's dispositive, this is not a human. You would not get two de deformed creatures identical that would be this bizarre with 10 ribs, all the anomalies you see in the photos and the CAT scan that's on our website. So if people want to get caught up on that, if you go to seriousdisclosure.com, there's an evidence button, and there's one that's just for the Atacama humanoid, and you can catch up with that. But uh, my own uh, feeling is that when we've had these experiences with some of these very, very small, uh, tiny ET civilizations, they're very interested, I believe, that, that we're sort of exploring the possibilities of this. And we don't know if there's a direct link between those two, or maybe this is some distant cousin or it may be something completely indigenous to Earth that's a humanoid that we've never known about. The Earth, you know, the Earth holds many mysteries, and, and I think that the, we have to keep an open mind about what the possibilities are.